practicing jumping around. It's jumping training. It's a jumper's warm up, right? Yeah, is that me? Jumper's warm up, son. This film, you know, is theoretically the third in my, what I call my Salad trilogy of starting with Born Identity, uh, of creating, you know, sort of big Hollywood entertainment. But I believe there is a, a vibrant indie film contained within the, the massive Hollywood apparatus, no matter how many bells and whistles and toys I have. <laughs> God knows in Jumper, I've got the most with the traveling the world and the, all the special effects and all of the action. But I still brought that philosophy of, well, what if you didn't have any of that? Is this, would the story still hold up? When you take a book and turn it into a movie, I'm really someone who, who believes in, in throwing the whole thing out and reinventing it as a movie. We preserved you know, a scene from the first act and that's basically it in terms of what we were preserving from the book. But it is, this is 100% Stephen Gould's story. It's just reinvented as a movie. What should I do with the, uh, the platinum, the other camera? You just get it set up on sticks with a 150 on it, off to the side, and we'll bring it in. Danny, if you could bring in your mini blower here just to kind of smooth this out just to the mouth of the cave and make it look sexy with greens. <laughs> This is a big, wide master of the scene, would be looking this way. Okay. So maybe what we'll do is we'll start with putting one camera on the Technocrane. But if you want to break it up, we'll, we'll literally be here for six hours shooting it, but it's fine. Uh, I, we'll literally be here for six hours shooting it because uh, none of this is budgeted. So I, it's really a, your choice. Excuse me, guys. Jamie's going to be in the shot. He knows what he's doing. I'm glad Doug no, like, thinks. That I know what I'm doing. <laughs> he just makes that assumption. Jamie knows what he's doing. <laughs> Jamie's really directing. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it says, <laughs> says, it says Jumper, directed by Doug Lyman. No. It, it really means. So. <laughs> yeah, Jumper. <laughs> Written and directed by Jamie Bell. <laughs> I think Doug is a, is a very unique individual. He sees this film in so many different ways at one particular instant. And it's almost like he's a jumper in his mind. You have to be flexible enough to even let go of all the things that you thought you were going to do because Doug had this fantastic idea about what was going on in the room. And it becomes sort of an on-the-go challenge that you as an actor have to stand up to. There are always... Well, I wrote the scene we're shooting today, uh, last night, so I'm way ahead of, um, of, uh, of the scene. That's a lot of advance for us. I'm sure over the span of the day I will rewrite it six or seven times, and we'll reblock it five or six times. But, yeah. We have a significant creative and financial problem. The creative problem is our limitations on Sam Jackson and when we can get him back. Our financial problems are we can't afford this boat thing that we've designed. It's just a total mess. And action! Oh. Oh. Let's do that walk in one last time. This is coming right off the fight. Yeah, not enough looks to him. Not enough looks. There's a fight, guys. There's shit flying and action! You were thinking of checking out Rome? Come on, you know that was my dream. Don't try to rip me off. Nam Street, day 79 of 63. Now, 85 of 63. I don't know. It's, it's, it's like a weird one of 63. It's 8, eight what? It's 81 of 81. We're doing this. It's fucking leg shake on day 81. Yep, that's right. This is one of the creative things, the most creative things Doug is going to do on the movie right now is explain why his, his skates were shaking. Um, while well, he had a breakaway playing ice hockey. Well, who, now, first, who first of all, who said they were shaking? It was, it's all over the crew. Everybody was talking about it yesterday, <laughs> especially the Canadians. It's because Kim told me to have them sharpen because the ice was super slick. Uh -huh. So I had them sharpen right before the game. Right, like everybody else who skates weren't shaking. You know, right before the game, I had right, right. and then I didn't have a chance to warm up because the game started so early. Right, right. And I was there a little late. Right. And it, the skates, like the first half of the game, the skates need to get worn in, uh -huh. and then they stop shaking. Because I myself was noticing, wow, these things are very shaky. Wow. You see, that's what's recently, called recently, storytelling. Yeah, recently sharpened skates.
Is there a Canadian skater in the room? Right here. <laughs> if, if we twist everything a little bit. Jamie. What? Tell me about your time. What, what, what time? How is your time? That time for me getting picked up from the hotel at 11.30 and then it's fucking 4.30 and I have done fucking shit. That time, or maybe about the time, maybe when I came in yesterday, when they're like, oh yeah, we really need to cut and color your hair because it's been so long. So we're gonna pick you up at 10.30, and I don't know, maybe we'll put you in a chair and get your hair done at like 6.30, 7. When the fucking cast are wrapped, when the crew is wrapped, and I'm there in the chair at 8, 8 p.m., and then I have to fucking wait for the director to get in the car so that I can go back to my hotel? Fuck that, man. It's annoying as hell, it's so annoying. Yeah, you start rolling. <laughs> it actually feels really good. You know what it would be? But my, oh, that's good, Kim. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's really good. Oh, yeah! Oh, wrong ball. It might be yeah. less likely yeah. to see you if you're on the other side. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, my God. I'm next. Let's shoot. Okay, okay, let's just figure out how to do the shot, then we'll get him wet. Yeah, but what are his legs? His legs, wouldn't they be down, you know? His feet should be dragging. Can I go flip? Oh, my head. There. And the second flip is the drop. Ready and roll, sound. Nice to hear, roll sound. And my sinus infection. And get ready, three, two, one, flip! Uh. Okay, three, two, one, flip! 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 flip. You want some padding in there? Uh -oh. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just think about that the third take. <laughs> when I first read the script, Jumper won. You know, that was like back in November in 2005. And obviously the, the script has developed and has become something completely different entirely. When, when did you read the last script? A few weeks ago. I know that's... We've had eight different ones since then. You forget, I'm now on Jumper 12. The script that I read from David Goyer, an incredible writer, uh, was so fresh and obviously got me immediately interested in the movie. Uh, but like uh, many of my projects, uh, probably the first thing I do when I get in there is just rip the whole thing apart. Uh, it made me, you know, give me kind of a dubious reputation in the studio system because that kind of process, you know, lends itself a little bit more to independent films. Uh, but I can't help it. Um, I just, if there's something about the script that's not right, I, 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 gotta, I gotta do what I can to try to fix it. All good, see? All good, see? All good. Head slightly to the right. Hey, uh, Ryan. Hopefully, you know, left foot triggers. Steps on it. Bob, you're all cool. Let's we'll see if, how it looks. That makes you jump in with you. But we'll try it again. Are you going to jump in? Should I'm I not jump in? Should I lower spot. myself in? OK, I'll lower myself in. He's going to jump in. You're going to be on the right side. Okay. You're going to push him this I'm going to be on this side. He's going to jump in, and I'm going to help push his body over. And you're underwater. Yeah. Okay. You want a mask? I think I went in, and then I went like this. Are, are you guys really ready to roll, though? Yep. Mark. Okay, you ready? I'm not ready yet. Hold on. Come, come on! That was your penis. We're rolling. Action. Cut. Add that look. Come on. Game up. Did he come up? Did he feel like he got swept side? Absolutely. Okay, it was good? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> I'll see you Monday. We'll concoct something for you to do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, That's I'll the see you Monday. Thing, yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of good color today. Hi, Bells. How are you? He's, nice he's British. He doesn't know how to swim. I don't know how to swim. I'm terrified of water. I don't know how to swim, don't know how to drown. I was raised in a tiny town of like 10,000 people. We didn't have swimming pools. Do you want to eat the mysterious crumbs that are in my no, pocket? No, I really don't. That's so good. No. Oh, God. That's I don't even know what... I don't even know... Oh, you know what this is? Oh, my God. 
Okay, this is lunch from Sundance. This is a cheese, American cheese and bread sandwich. And look at the American cheese that's become these little rock cut pieces. Okay, stand by, here we go, stand by. So we're doing uh, Millie's uh, underwater set sequence now. Uh, the way a sequence like this that's uh, quite a, it's a, it's a bona fide stunt. The, the actors really are underwater. They're really, um, they're actually in that apartment that's underwater. So Rachel has a, has a ceiling. Is that 12? It's 12. Um, she really has a uh, roof over her head. Um, Simon Crane's specialty is doing shots like this with um, with the actors and not with stunt doubles. Um, and so it's a sequence where Simon and I will talk it out, work it out in advance, and then Simon works directly with the actors and directs them. Um, and he's kind of unique in the uh, action world of his relationship with the, you know, a lot of times second unit directors will work just with the stunt players. Simon really almost exclusively works with actors. Video, yeah, shitty video. You know, I mean, I'm actually like, I'm, uh, I'm quite a happy person. Like, I'm quite set in myself. Like, I mean, I enjoy working on this film. I love the, all the people so here. That chair that just flew by, the chair that just flew by, something along those lines is, is great stuff. But uh, let's not kill ourselves. Let's just get some when we can. Fuck. I've ordered up cameras with lenses. They're, they must be putting the lenses on because I've heard conversations about the give me the impression. I don't know if they're putting the lenses on the camera I'm still at the Coliseum. This is a very expensive gelato eating session. <laughs> <laughs> it's really costly. That's all I'm saying. Ten minutes, ten minutes. That's, that's an Italian Italian ten minutes. Minutes. But this particular movie, I will describe it as, um, and for me as a challenge, was actually to know how to exist and do my work the best I can in the Triangle of Bermuda. And the Triangle, you have three names. You have Doug Lehman, Lucas Foster, and Kim Winter. Let's just go, because we're running a little later. Coliseum, or what's yeah, we're going to the Coliseum first. So, we get here. Five o'clock in the morning, Hayden has to be ready at the hotel or something in like 20 minutes. And you have to come here at 6.30 and you shoot the arrival. You go, I mean, you go inside first, you get what you get. Which is the opening scene with three steady cams. And he's gotta be ready to act. You know what I mean? There's no rehearsal. Like from the entire crowd. So, so d'autres de Toronto, donc j'ai pas de problème pour uh, avoir une deuxième personne. This is a, this is a very specific, casual, elegant vibe to it that the coat uh, 
interrupts. That's so we, we, the coat can be later after the beautiful part in the Colosseum, exactly. but not, yeah, not during the Colosseum. Yeah. So now, so now I just want to make sure, I so I, I, I want to make sure like for, for the jacket uh, that will be hanging on, do yeah. you prefer this or do you prefer this? We're leaving. If we do, we have to find a way so you're not trapping so we'll yourself. Go, go, go back. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. you capturing how beautiful it is out here? It's very early in the morning. It's the sun's coming up. It is exactly... 6.25. 6.25? Holy shit, we're late. If you can be a little lower, sure, no I know problem. it's tough because she's not so tall. Yeah. But it just looks better for from down low. Okay. Uh, if I'm, if you're a little below her, I get more. Very good. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Even if you have to chop her chin off. Well, what we can do is I can try to drop it down here on the way around. Good. Because yeah, you know I mean? then it just looks more impressive if okay. you're. I don't personally believe that movies that are static are, are that interesting. There's a traditional way of making a movie is. You write the screenplay, you cast the actors, and then you go into the manufacturing phase where it's supposed to be an assembly line. You have a limited amount of time and a limited amount of money and days and, and access to things, and you have your little factory and you process the shots, you get the shots you need to put the story together. The way we work, we're continuously evolving the story with the actors. We, we frequently consult them on what they think you know, we should do um, when, when the character has to make a turn. And, um, and we, integrate that into the story and ultimately we integrate it into the mythology of all of the movies and so we've learned things you know as we as we've gone and and um it, it's a continuous circle amongst all of us about how to make it better uh doug come home doug where are you doug where are you doug what do you want to do next That was intense. Pretty cool beats in there. <laughs> that was pretty rad. You missed the. Uh, I went running into one of the side chambers. No, there's a pit. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> Doug doesn't. I mean, for Doug, it's always it's a journey of exploration for him. So at this point, if you asked him what's a film about, what are we trying to do, he'd kind of be like, I don't know. Like, you know. Remember when we were back on Jumper 1? <laughs> um, and I actually shot some stuff then? I do remember since that, actually. Then, like, since then, I haven't shot anything. Summer 2004? Yeah. Summer 2004, yeah, 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 we yeah. began. No, I think it was 2000. It was pretty soon after Billy Elliot, actually. So, <laughs> yeah. That's why everyone's like, what happened to that kid? Where's the dance moves? Where's the dance moves in action? <laughs> what, what, what happened to him? Pirouette, what jump happened kick. To him? Pirouette, jump kick. Pirouette, jump kick, part of Pirouette. It's weird, they're like, he has facial hair now. And he's got and he's scars and shit. Yeah. And, Although there is going to be dancing, I, I dance all along yeah, the yeah, yeah. outskirts. Of it. Just I heard the edges up there yeah, and yeah, yeah, the top yeah, yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm excited. These people are here yeah. to take a look to see you do your special dance to feel the electricity I'm go so through glad your body. Here. It is all about electricity, ultimately. <laughs> <laughs>
So the scene's on uh, page five. But if you look at page 10 and 11, there's some bonus dialogue to add to it because you have a pretty long walk. Um, yeah, I just, I just, I just don't want to be, you know, saying the same exact, like, running out of the college team. I just don't want to. No, I think you're asking very specific, very cogent questions. I just don't want to do the vague thing again, like running out of the college team. Yeah. What happened? David, slow down. Talk to me. David, what, 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 what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might start with, what did they say to you? They just asked me a lot of questions for eight hours. Yeah, they had a lot of questions. If you're comfortable enough to, you know, just show up to work and, and be willing to explore things that, you know, you, you weren't intending on, on, on doing, you couldn't ask for a better director. God, I'm such a fucking dumbass for so long. I mean, I know I have to be. Uh, we like way too much work for the time, but we're you know, taking the camera going in here while they're relighting in there. If I can just efficiently leapfrog, we get a shot here, we get a shot there, we get a shot here, we get a shot there. This scene's with Hayden, that scene's with Rachel. But the moment I fuck up one of these two things and I can't leapfrog, we're cooked. So you're trying to do your work, and hey, you're waiting for the magistrate. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, we've been waiting a long time, buddy. Now you see, or we see, huh? Come on. Good. 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 That kind of attitude's really good. Can I add something? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Especially if it's in Italian. No, no. Okay. That's good. That's it. I think we should shoot this. Yeah, just go and shoot it right now. Yeah, that's what I yeah, I'm watching it right here. But I'm going to stay here with Hayden. Go ahead and roll. Can you pull the Preston off of that thing, please? The whole bracket? Yeah. I'm going to go shoot this. It's a, I'm not going to agonize over the shot. You come out looking for her, it's like, oh fuck, he's there. So it's just like, just give me an editing handle there. Like, oh fuck, he's there? Yeah, but he didn't hear right. you, good. Okay. Or is it maybe better that I don't look that way first, I just see mom, and then hey, hey, saying hey. something is, oh fuck, and then it's, what do I do, and okay, then. Let's see what that looks like, okay. Ready? Rolling, oh, I'm watching. Okay, Kim, do one more. One more, Kim, going again. Tomorrow's our last day of photography in Rome. Let's see what's going on over there. Let's see what's going on over here. And we'll go with, with, with them. We'll go with the and we'll just come back to Rachel. Yeah, I think like, especially maybe they stop just a step deeper so you have a chance to sort of pan over right to that guy. Open the curtains there. Back to Hayden and her. Let him go in. And her, and then is it, you know, this is, they end up on the bed like this. <laughs> Fuck, I hope somebody ever checked my for camera. A moment I wish really I had my out. camera. She was like, what the wow. hell is going on? <laughs> Let me just see, uh, 
Hayden, come up here too. Is that for Matt? Yeah. And you're talking to each other. Looking at... <laughs> That's kind of sweet. But the. Uh, I know Lucas doesn't want to hear the word sweet. <laughs> I can't help it. It's in my bones to be sweet, <laughs> not to be nasty. You have um, an hour and 20 minutes of daylight. It's five o'clock, bitches. Where are we going? Well, we're going to Paris for the day. Do you want to change in the bathroom here? Okay. Um, where are we going? We're going straight to the location by the Seine. Okay. <laughs> Bells. Jamie. Jamie. Because you need to do a practice. Oui, oui. Alors, on est au coin de Hôtel de Ville et la Seine, mais euh, l'autre, le, derrière l'Hôtel Hôtel de Ville et la Seine, mais derrière Hôtel de Ville. There's not a lot being, being done. We're just hanging out. Pigeons. The weather sucks. So we're going to come back here tomorrow, but I may want to play this one scene in the rain. That's what I like to do. I like to read random facts from Wikipedia that put Doug to sleep. But Lucas, you you saw that email that we have to translate the script into Chinese? Yeah, yeah. Simon's are... A one. Basically, it's going to be three cameras. It's going to be two cameras in the water and a camera up top. Stand by to shoot. Come in, sort of be like this. Struggle, struggle, struggle. You know, and then underwater as they come to the surface. As they're coming to the surface, and maybe spins around with a detonator like that. So you know, like say okay, so I'm I've Griffin. got the detonator. I've got the right detonator. Oh, Griffin had the detonator. So when, David grabbed him. Yeah, and it's me. I just go. Like that, as I come to the surface and you maybe dive on top of me. Okay. Do, do and then we'll I mean? land on the street we'll, that way. Exactly, yeah. Three, two, one, jump! Hey, hey, hey! Action! It hurts your ability to complain when you're talking about how cold your ears are and whatnot, and there's a big poofy hood just dangling. No, but I need to get earmuffs. Look, look, look at this. Look at this kid. Look at this kid. Look at him go. No, I don't smoke. Really. No, not yet. I can do a whole. Of course, you're going to have to go. Thank you. Bravo, Mark.
Oh, he's excited. He's brought inside. Never seen real explosions before. Usually, all computer generated. I can smell it. I can see it. I can hear it. It's so good. you would have been stumbling. You okay. should come in stumbling or falling. And it is, if you start maybe here, when we do this path, there won't be. You'll get like this close. Yeah. Literally dug all halfway through a day ago. It's not working. Let's redo it. Oh, let's reconfigure. Oh, let's redo something. And it works. Is the minute you give that rejig, something new happens. Ah, oh, shit! I tend to be very attracted to imperfect characters, and I love them for it. I'm not judgmental of them. I'm just more interested in people who are a little bit less heroic, a little bit more real. Parker! And Sam! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you pull this red first two books out of here? Power corrupt. Uh, power corrupt. Next one too. But throw the seaweed back on there. So, it's this playing. Is surreal. It's playing a little. <laughs> <laughs> I just gotta say. Um. No, I like Doug a lot. Uh, it's an interesting process for me. I mean, I've I've done over a hundred films, and this is kind of the most different kind of process that I've been in in a while. Um, I remember it from my days in the theater. Doug's wild energy is something that Griffin just feeds off of, you know. Um, the script uh, and the movie and the characters are all evolving and, and Doug is letting that happen and uh, exploring new things, discovering new things. And uh, I, I, I think that's really interesting and really great that you can do that on, on, a, on such a big, uh, big film. <laughs> yes, mercy. You say mercy. After for another month. Another month. Or two more days of filming. Either. Your cameraman is none other than Doug Lyman. Okay. This is some fancy camera work. It's gonna make J Bells look like a man. Yeah! I'm a man! Look at me, I'm a man! I'm a man, everybody! Hey! I'm proving myself as a man! This is a Mick G camera work right here. Look at that. Little Michael Bay coming at you. Ooh, oh, look at that! Shit. Through the leg! That's a Michael Bay for you. Believe it or not, I'm too tired to continue.
Hey, it's Lisa here with the movie Extras Fact. Now, while Independence Day's visual effects are littered with CGI, one of its more compelling scenes is a scene in which the aliens set fire to New York. Unlike the rest of the visual effects in the movie that fire was real, the production team built a model city on a soundstage, installed pyrotechnics underneath, and flipped the city sideways while they lit it on fire. Hmm. Now, click here below to subscribe and remember to tap the bell to always receive our videos in your feed.